next, Candace Jedrowitz. Did you know that Halloween is her very, 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 very favorite day of the year? Candace's? Yes. I would imagine that it would be. <laughs> So what she's creating today is an articulated skeleton from polymer clay. Articulated. Hi, Candice. Hello, my darlings. I've been expecting you. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own little person in miniature. You can pose her any way you want. She could be raising her hand in class. Oh, oh, oh! I know the answer, I know the answer. Or she could be a graceful ballerina. Maybe, let's see. Yes. Hold down to your hats, because here we go. This is how I measured out the clay for the different skeleton parts. And the easiest part about this skeleton is that every piece is a bead. This is the skull. And the teeth are made just by pushing them in. If you have a little bit of room, you can make the bottom part of the jaw. And I use something flat to make the eyes because I like to put jewels in them. And just a tiny mark for nose. And then I will start the beading behind the jaw. I'll start the hole, the bead hole, and come up through the top like that. That's the skull bead. This is what you need to make the chest cavity. <laughs> of course, it wants to jump around. The chest cavity needs to be narrowed right in the center. And it also needs to be kind of sunglasses shaped. This is the bottom of the rib cage, and this is the top. Before I bend it into place and add the other piece, which is part of the spine, I'll make my rib marks. There don't have to be a lot of them. You can make as many as you want, little, little ribs. and then it bends around in kind of an oval shape and that's where this piece attaches. This is the bead that makes this part the chest and spine. Keep your shape as much as possible and remember that the upper part of the chest is wider than the lower part. Now you can smooth and blend that on. That works pretty good. And then it gets a hole down right through there. This is the pelvis. The pelvis, remember, is kind of a triangle. And almost a bicycle seat, really. It has the two pieces that come up toward the back that make up your hips. And they have holes, big holes, that are part of the makeup of the skeleton. But what you want to do here, since when your wire goes down through the head, through the rib cage, through all of your spine pieces, it comes out here. If I made a hole right in the middle, 
the top of my legs would touch. I want the holes to be on the sides. So I start near the center and go out to the side. Start near the center and go out toward the side. And that's a pelvis. The hands and the feet are pretty easy. They're just shaped like, kind of like that. And then you want to push down for a thumb. You want to go all the way back. Make the separations at the ends of the hand. And you can make it longer again if it squishes down. And I'll do that on both sides and then make the hole down toward the wrist. The foot is the same except you don't cut the thumb. And after it's fired, there's my little jewels, and I did a background color of brown felt pen and used a fine purple felt pen to define all of the details. The other way that I used the brown was the top and bottom of each bone to break up the white for the skeleton. I'm going to start with a piece of 14 inch wire that I folded in half and I'll go down through the top of the skull and you can bend that down if you're going to do a hat or put hair on it or something. And then you'll go down mm, through probably two vertebrae beads. Whoa, he's jumping around. Down through the chest. Okay, that looks fine to me. Add three more. You can add as many as you like. I, I think it would be interesting to see a really long skeleton. One more. Always make more vertebrae beads than you need. You also need two because the lower legs have a small bead in between them. That looks good. Now remember when we made the pelvis, we put two holes that go out to the sides. Because I want these to be double wires too, I already have a 12 inch wire that I folded in half and put down through there. Go on little wire, go through. There we go. Try to keep your wires from twisting. You don't want to give yourself any more trouble than you need. All right, that's looking pretty good. So let's put on some leg bones. Remember the kneecap. of you. Go in there. Yay! And the lower leg bone. Of course there are two, but no one's going to notice that you didn't make two lower leg bones. And that gives you some nice joints right there. And you can see what I mean about the brown breaking up all the white in the bones. Now go down through the top of your foot. Which foot is this? All right. It is the right foot. And you want to bend that down. Leave yourself a tiny little bit of play in there. You don't want it toe sight so tight that you won't be able to bend the leg and wrap the extra wire around the ankle joint. 
Okay, and the rest of that will wrap around all the way. Now for the arms, I have another piece of 12 inch wire that I folded in half and I'm going to go behind the neck and you can go a little bit farther than you need to go if you want to to be able to fit the other side through and it should be crimped pretty small so that it will go easily through the hole. You can also wrap this around the rip, the um, neck, the vertebrae. And anytime you have a situation like this where there's wire, you want to pull very gently because you do not want to break your clay. All right, very good. So, two arm bones. No vertebrae bone between the two. You don't really need it for the hands. Let's see, which is the... This is the left hand. Go down through the front. See, I marked on both sides because I might want to position this hand behind his head or in front of his chest like that. And you want to make sure that it still looks like a hand. Do the same thing that you did with the foot and wrap it around the wrist. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Now here he is, all put together, sitting a little too casually in a chair. Well, we'll have to fix that, won't we? It's time for disco. Sorry, bub. You're going dancing. I hope that you're inspired to try something like this, and I hope that if you do, I get to see it. Email me, Candice, at cooltocraft.com with your photos and stories. Bye now. Have a pleasant tomorrow.